Okay, and let's talk about something else nobody else ever talks about. F-stop versus T-stop. Now, I've told you about like the Voigtlander 58mm Nocton uh, F1.4, how uh, you always uh, basically need to uh, set the exposure value for negative 3 quarters of a stop, because it will typically always overexpose by 3 quarters of a stop. Everybody thinks that actually an f-stop is a representation of how fast the lens is, and it's not. F-stop is just a numerical representation of the size of the lens aperture in relationship to the focal length. F-stop is focal length over aperture. We're talking about actually measuring f-stop here in relationship to the focal length of the aperture. A t-stop will actually quickly tell you how the calculation of the ultimate transmission of the light out of the rear element is mostly used uh, in videography. Now, um, is not, people think that it has to do, uh, well, the people do mention that uh, T-stop has to do with glass, or they talk about uh, coatings or the amount of reflection you get off of interior e elements, and obviously it is true that the, any reflections you get off of interior elements is a, a lack of uh, transmission, and, uh, you know, because the T-stop is a transmission stop, the amount of light that's actually passing through the lens out of the rear element. Um, but uh, glass is a dielectric capacitor. Back in the old days, I'm sure you've seen them in antique stores, they're actually uh, glass insulators. They're like bluish-green glass, and some of them were clear. They still use glass insulators and in, uh, some forms of electrical line transmission, but the glass is a capacitor. Back in the old days before... Uh, we perfected perfectly microwave safe bowls. Even still today, they explode and crack in the microwave. People think it's due to heat that those glass bowls uh, break or explode in the microwave, but it's not. It's actually due to glass capacitance. The same way in uh, electrical lines uh, where uh, the power is lost and they drop the power, turn the power back on, there will be an instant surge. Uh, linesmen will actually, well, there are none of those still alive that were replacing glass uh, insulators back then. There might be, still be a few people like that are alive, but they will actually tell you about exploding uh, insulators. There are actually some people out um, that used to live on the farms that talk about the power being out. Power comes back on again and they could actually see or witness the old glass insulators that actually explode like a frigging bomb. And uh, the reason for that is that glass has the nature of dielectric capacitance, as is the nature of light. It's not purely electromagnetic, it has a longitudinal z-axis dielectrical component. Part of the transmission factor, um, t-stop factor of a lens also is due to the, uh, the uh, ED doped glass, which has a certain dielectric permittivity and uh, also the amount of glass that uh, has uh, greater or less uh, magnetic permeability. Obviously the number of glass elements, what sort of glass it is. The coatings actually, if you actually stick a lens hood, all things being equal, people think that coatings contribute an enormous amount uh, to ultimate uh, light transmission and it's nowhere near as much as you think it is. People think, oh, there's a magic coating on this lens, it's nanoparticle coated and it just you know, instead of reflecting light, it just sucks up. It's just total bullcrap. Yeah, it has better, uh, better transmission, but uh, the notion that it's magical is absolute BS. It has helped in uh, multi-lens element, multi-elemental uh, lens construction, but there's nothing magical about glass. Nanoparticle coating and uh, ED glass has actually been the huge revolutionary in uh, correcting for chromatic aberration, allowing for uh, greater uh, lens designs and uh, more elements. Allergies are absolutely killing me right now this time of year. It hasn't rained in forever. It's been pissing all summer long, but this uh, now it's stopped uh, raining for the past uh, few weeks, and my allergies are absolutely murdering me. But anyway, the important thing is that you need to differentiate, understand what the difference is between the T-stop and an F-stop, because the F-stop of your lens is not the T-stop. Like um, one of a, a horrible performer, for example, is the uh, Nikon 70 to 200 VR. Uh, it's Nikon 70 200 2.8 VR2. Its actual T-stop value is kind of bad, and actually, its ultimate transmission is not 2.8. Obviously, any sort of glass stops light, but the nature of that particular lens is, I think it's like a 3.4 or something like that. Its T-stop value for transmission. At f2.8, the uh, Nikkor 7200 2.8 VR2 uh, T-stop value is 3.4, so 
So the f-stop of the lens is 2.8. You think, well, that's the speed of my lens. Like, no. That's the f-stop of your lens. The only thing that really matters, your, your camera doesn't give a crap about what the f-stop of your lens is. Well, that information is fed to the camera, obviously. It only matters what the actual t-stop value is. In other words, what intensity in uh, lux is actually crapped out of the back of your lens under the sensor. I mean, that's all your camera really cares about. Like, you could have a really uh, great f-stop uh, uh, Samyang or any Wang Dong or Wupu. I mean, all these crappy lens manufacturers. Like, uh, I mean, people are asking me all the time, you know, what about Wang Dong lenses and Wang Pu? You know, it's like, oh my God, I mean, these crappy lenses are, you know, they sell for like $140 and they're barely worth $140. And um, some of those are actually decent as so far as your T stop value, but the only thing that ultimately matters is the transmission that occurs in the back of the lens. So. Something you need to consider to educate yourself is that the speed of your lens is the speed of your lens in relationship to the focal length over the aperture, which is the f-stop value of your lens, but the only thing your camera gives a damn about, and the only thing you should give a damn about, and really the only people that consider this are filmmakers, but it's a consideration for photography as well, is what the actual t-stop or transmission value of your lens is. And, uh, there's several factors that contribute to that. Number of glass elements, whether it's ED coated, I mean ED doped glass. Yeah, ED is not a uh, coating, it's actually a doping of the glass that actually changes uh, the focal point uh, posterior to the element to, to correct for chromatic aberration to lend uh, into the design of the lens so that you're able to actually uh, change the focal length and the actual zoom range of the lens. It allows the manufacturer to create more unique oddball lenses. Unfortunately, what it does is it drastically alters the light. It kind of molests as it passes through, and that's what uh, lends to the renditional distortion that I've talked about endlessly. But anyway, start uh, thinking about and at least acknowledging that the f-stop your lens is not the true value of what is actually transmitted out of the rear of the lens, which of course is the only ultimate importance. Thanks for watching. Like this video, drop a buck or two. Tell me go jump a cliff. Another video from the photography. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye. <laughs>